there's no doubt about it. Players are having a lot of fun in season four. A lot of people are saying it's the best season yet. It's fun enough that some players are leveling multiple characters and trying out different builds. Reddit is actually full of mostly positive comments rather than all negative. However, amidst all this positive D4 vibes, is a little trend starting to creep in to my video comments and live streams. And that is, the game is better, but the end game is boring. Nothing to do after I hit level 100. Now, I'm not gonna lie, as someone who has played since launch and leveled up multiple characters, the lack of end game certainly rears its ugly head. So what does Blizzard do to tackle this issue? Do they have something in store for season five? Will this problem get addressed prior to the Vessel of Hatred expansion? What could they do to beef up the end game? Let's explore. So today in Diablo 4, season four specifically, we have the following content that absorbs the majority of our time and playthrough. And we'll start off with probably the funnest activity in Diablo 4, and that is Helltides. Helltides, although a major star in season four and a ton of fun, like I said, once you get to the end game, you're kind of tired running Helltides because you've done so many of them throughout your playthrough that you kind of just want to be done with it and try different content. So although Helltides definitely S tier content, having a lot of fun, the threat meter, the mini boss in Helltides, a lot of fun. It does the repetitiveness of it. Just by the time you get to level 100, you're kind of like you're over it kind of thing. So that's Helltides, Nightmare Dungeons. Although mob density has been increased and many bad features of Nightmare Dungeons in the past have been removed, let's just call it what it is. Everyone's burned out from Nightmare Dungeons. And this is a problem that's continued, that we've carried with us since the launch of Diablo 4. Because really, let's call a spade a spade. Prior to season four, Nightmare Dungeons was the way to go and the content you needed to do in order to level to 100. And we just are all burned out from Nightmare Dungeons. So we're just over them. So I have no idea what Blizzard can do to battle that and conquer that issue. Everyone is so burned out about Nightmare Dungeons. There's, I, I think they need to look at Nightmare Dungeons and see how they can refresh that content. Okay, Torment Bosses. So, although fun, but most would argue all the boss fights in Diablo 4, including the Tormented Bosses, need to be upgraded and made more difficult. The boss fights in D4 are vanilla, as far as I'm concerned. And as long as you have a good build, you can beat them. The thing I continue to hear is that there's no skill required to kill the D4 bosses. All of them. Most are very vanilla fight. We did a clan uh, playthrough of all the boss fights in Diablo 4, in Season 4, and I'll be honest, honest with you and I said it on my stream maybe one or two fights were kind of exciting other than that it's just spamming the boss and avoiding their damage and really there aren't no complicated mechanics and the boss is dead um so really the torment bosses I would argue the two reasons why you would do it is obviously getting the unique and that's important some of the builds uh require unique gear or weapons so obviously you're going to need to run the bosses in Diablo 4 and another reason why people do it is I guess it's a flex but it's you're testing your build so you want to see whether or not your build can kill the uber bosses and you know the tormented bosses in Diablo 4 other than that really it's about getting the uniques because the boss fights aren't exciting or challenging as far as I'm concerned. So that's Torment the Bosses and the Boss Ladder and, and all the bosses in Diablo 4. And the Pit. Probably the most challenging content. Sorry, the most difficult content in Diablo 4. Everyone is testing their builds and seeing who can clear the highest Pit tier and and that is good uh, i think that brings value to the game it brings good content to the game and i think it's a chase for players to see okay how 
Where does my build stack up with the pit? What's the highest tier I can clear? That 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 is the meta right now when it comes to the pit. What character is clearing the highest tier in the pit? So I think that's a good thing. Um, but really, outside of that, which again, some people would classify maybe as a flex, really the purpose of the pit outside of that is that's where you get the mats to masterwork. Other than that, some would argue it's just a flex. The content is, is for flexing. Uh, who knows? Uh, the biggest complaint about the pit, and this is something that I think Blizzard needs to address. The biggest that I hear anyway, is that the reward don't scale with the level of difficulty in the pit. And that is a shame because if there is a correlation between the escalating level of difficulty and the, and the rewards escalating, I think you would find more players would find the pit more appealing and they would gravitate to doing the pit more. Uh, again, I would suspect that the majority of players that really don't care about flexing and seeing how high of a tier in the pit that they can clear, for the most part, they're doing the pit because they need the mats to be able to master work. And that leads me to the final content section of season four and that is obviously why what the season is named after loot reborn and that's the tempering and master working s tier content a huge w in season four and one of the main reasons i would say is why people are enjoying season four and that is because of the master working and tempering again i've said this many times in many videos the control has put back to the in the player's hands when it comes to their loot vis-a-vis -vis through tempering and master working and that and, and blizzard are just reaping the benefits of that getting a lot of praise for it and a lot of and 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 they're seeing it in their numbers so that definitely is something that is a huge foundation and a great foundation for the game and is going to be able to set itself up if used properly to succeed in the future when it comes to further seasons and expansions but i want to circle back to where we started this video off and Little by little, more and more comments are creeping into my videos and people coming into my live streams and saying, I'm bored. I leveled a character. I leveled a couple of characters to 100. I did all the content. I find it boring. So I wanted to create this video and ask you guys for your input, but I'd also like to provide my input. What does Blizzard do now? Season four, again, I've said this a million times already. Season four is by far going to be the best season of since the launch of Diablo 4. Hands down, no questions asked. We now have another season, season five, and then we have the Vessel of Hatred if they stick to their timelines and the Vessel of Hatred doesn't get delayed. And we have not heard anything toward, anything in light of that, so... We, we would uh, take that to mean Vessel of Hatred is going to be uh, coming down in the fall of 2024. So we have another season, season five, before the Vessel of Hatred. What can they do? Will they do something? What can Blizzard, what can they do in the endgame? Or is the Vessel of Hatred going to be the drop that addresses these concerns? And if that's the case, what's season five going to look like? Now, typically, I have a lot more answers and opinions rather than questions. But in this video, I want to put the ball in your court. What would you do if you were Blizzard and you're hearing these things that people are getting bored? Not everyone. But there is a good part of the population and the player base in Diablo 4 that is getting bored. What do you do? How do you get from here to the Vessel of Hatred without losing players in Season 5? Remember, if you choose not to deal with it, what are you doing in Season 5? Are you hoping you can carry this momentum, not do anything drastic, and hope 
that players will still stick around in season five. What can they do to address this end game issue? And they're not the only game to come across this. And the first game that pops into my mind that has been crucified for not having an end game. And I would also argue also bad luck because just so many ARPGs dropped with the launch since the launch of their game. And I'm talking about Last Epoch, which has so many boxes ticked when it comes to what you need in a good ARPG, but they too lack end game. Now it's being addressed July 9th with their con next content drop. However, they have lost a ton of players. So Diablo 4 is not the only game to be hurt by not having a lot of meat and variety in their end game. Last Epoch also shares that. Now there are games that thrive and have benefited from having a good end game and that is Path of Exile. And maybe one of the reasons why it's always acclaimed to be and said to be the best ARPG out there right now. And that's because their end game is very diverse, has a lot of meat on the bone with their map and their Atlas skill tree, you know, the customization involved with that. How can Diablo 4 put meat on the bone when it comes to the end game? Will they, should they, how are they gonna do it? That question is for you guys. I want you to tell me because I would love to hear it. What do you think they should do? Are they going to do anything? Or are they going to ride this tidal wave of success success uh, with season four into season five and then do a major drop with the Vessel of Hatred? And if they do stick with that strategy, will it stick? Will season five continue the momentum? I would love to hear your thoughts. I have to say, I, for the very first time, am stumped on what they should do. I have already given you my opinion on what I think some of the things they should do to beef up the end game, but I'm kind of holding back on it because I don't think they can do it in such a short amount of time because season five is literally two and a half months away. Now, that seems like a lot of time to me. But if I look at past history with Blizzard and how slow they do major things, I just don't think they can do it in that short of a time. Um, but this is more about, I, I, I want to get ideas and examples from you guys, guys that are watching my videos. And for the new ones that just stumbled on this video or YouTube recommended it to you, I would love to hear your take because at the end of the day, I would love to uh, look at all of that and maybe it'll spur some ideas for me too. And maybe we can do a vi another video on that. Anyway, get into the comments section. Let me hear your thoughts. You are now the developer at Diablo 4. You're Blizzard. What do you do for season five? That's the big question because I don't think they can afford because this is the last, 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 last chance for them to save Diablo 4. Um, so with that mindset, what are you going to do in, Diablo, in, in Season 5? I would love to get into the comment section. Let me know your strategy for Diablo 4 for Season 5, Mr. Blizzard Designer Developer. Anyway, I hope you found this video informative and as always, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it would help my channel grow immensely, and I would appreciate the support. And as always, look forward to seeing you in Sanctuary. And for those of you that are on Twitch, I stream every evening on Twitch. The channel name is Sammy Caps. I'd love to have you come over. We're about to hit 100, hopefully, on my very first hardcore character in Season 4. I am level 95, so we're five levels away from 100. Uh, come on in, say hello. We'd love to have you. And as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in Sanctuary and take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.